Why doesn't every home in the U.S. have... it brought to modern creepypastas. I first want to take you all back to 2013. It's a crisp autumn evening and the pattern, hyper-realism you're about to hear, actually happened. But with that out of the way, the events began as follows. It's late December 2010. Adam, a moderator over at Super Mario World Central.net, a site dedicated to hacking the iconic Super Nintendo game, was browsing the ROM hacks requiring mod verification section. After scrolling through them for a bit, one caught his eye, as it was simply titled Mario. Since it was technically his job to do so, he downloaded the hack and was greeted with two files one being the ROM, and the other a text file. Usually where hack creators would add any remarks or instructions. But upon opening the said text document, he found what seemed to be the ROM code, copied into text form. And as he stared at the jumbled text, he noticed the phrase, Find me, hidden, and repeated without context. Thinking nothing of it, Adam continued on to the game, but this is when things took a turn down the stranger road. After booting up the ROM, the opening title was replaced with simply Mario, and the color palette of the sprites appeared to be less vibrant, as if they were dulled out. Adam described the whole situation as wrong, feeling as if something bad happened. And that's exactly the feeling he was meant to experience, because after getting into the gameplay, everything was mismatched. The opening letter stated that Mario was added again. The enemies in each level were missing, along with the level titles being changed to something darker. Text boxes also displayed cryptic messages such as, I hate you, and this is the selfish way out. Gordon. The level designs were completely altered and gave off an unsettling feeling as the lack of music, enemies, and ambience left it feeling empty. The only normal part of this hack was the boss fight with Iggy that quickly changed after defeating him, when this ominous message displayed as the castle crumbled. Then as you continue on to the next area, it's missing. There is a level, or what's left of it anyway, that only has a few final messages, hidden features, and the eventual permanent darkness where the game ceases to continue. Something that Adam described as the representation of Mario's horrific death. Disturbed after the fact, Adam wrote up his experience, posted it back on the forums, and anxiously waited for people to respond. Initially, Adam's story was met with mixed reception. Some were interested, some freaked out, and some laughed. But everything changed the moment the founder of the site, Kieran, stepped in. He happened to recognize the strange text wasn't random or the game code at all, but actually part of a JPEG header. After a bit of tweaking around, Kieran managed to recover an image from the file, 
albeit corrupted, but this is what it was. At this point, the tone in the thread pulled a full 180. Those who were laughing were now interested, and those who were interested were now creeped out. Especially since the photograph seemed to coincide with the disturbing statement after crushing Iggy's castle. Shortly thereafter, the story began to catch on with the public, even being published as a creepypasta a week later. People began to add their own experiences from the game, saying lights flickered after playing, computers crashed, and that the distorted image was actually a real photograph of a murder victim. As these claims piled over time, thousands more became invested, which led to a multitude of YouTubers even covering the story on their own channels. But this leads us to the main questions. Who uploaded this ROM hack? And where did this image come from? Well, to answer the first part, our pal Mullet Mike solved this question years ago. In his 2013 video, he managed to contact Adam on his YouTube channel. To summarize, Adam stated his experience was genuine, and he was in no way affiliated with the creation of the hack. He then went on to state he got in touch with the actual creator of the hack and said, he's a relatively normal person, nothing creepy about him at all. However, when it comes to the deranged image, that's where things get a little bit tricky. We know people made claims saying it was a photograph of a real murder victim, hence the coroner's report, but there's no verifiable proof of this. But what I did read is that this photo apparently existed years before this ROM hack was even uploaded. Once again, although there is no exact proof of this claim, multiple individuals stated that this photograph was used on 4chan's paranormal boards in the mid-2000s in order to promote an unnamed band at the time. This user summarized it by stating a man claimed the photo appeared as a file on his computer, and throughout the day, random sound files would appear. If played, they would make him feel sick and dizzy. It went on for almost two days, until the user apparently admitted it was all a hoax, in order to promote his music. I even attempted to certify this claim by reverse image searching the photograph on multiple search engines, but the earliest I could find results for was December 2010, and with a source of Super Mario World Central. So if this claim is indeed factual, it would be safe to say that the Mario ROM hack has nothing sinister hiding inside of it. However, if it's not, then we are back to square one. Nevertheless, I do believe it paved the way for future video game creepypasta-like stories, such as I Hate You, Mario.exe, and Sonic.exe. But of course, just because a lot of the things you find online are fake, doesn't mean